and welcome to Hooked on Hobbies, the series that explores our pastimes, pursuits and passions. I'm in Essex near the Dartford Bridge and well, we're going motorsport circuit racing. Now I must quickly add that although Brands Hatch is a couple of miles south of here, we're not going Formula One, we're going Formula Fun because we're under starters orders for a good old spot of banger racing. fast and exciting hobby and what it perhaps lacks in finesse it certainly makes up for in the sheer hard work and dedication of those people who prepare and drive these racing wrecks one such hobbyist and former world champion is our man John Harris well here we are in John Harris's yard this is John Harris All right John banger racing um, sounds very interesting tell me something about it yep it's, uh, it's a cheap cheap hobby banger racing it's one way of uh, having to crash in a car legally <laughs> uh, on the track. Uh, 15 laps is basically uh, the, the gold you're going for. Uh, if you cross the line first and you have a trophy, then it's a good day out. But at the same time, you have just as good a day having a good crash. Um, basically, what it's about crashing and winning. Well, I mean, I take it. I mean, I take it that's not a car we're going to be using. But uh, I mean, it's it's an absolute mangled mess. I yeah. mean, I'd be surprised that anyone even got out of this car. What inspires you to get into a car and well, leave it like that? This, this car is, is funny enough, it's, got, it's called a Toyota Crown. And it was raced on the firecracker, the big one at the end of our year. Yeah. Um, that is actually one hit that's caused that damage. John, obviously you're not going to be driving this on Sunday. No, no, the car we'll be using is uh, BMW, which is out here. Right, right, okay. This is uh, Sunday's car. Uh, it's a 316 BMW, manual, uh, not the preferred car, but the one that came up, which was a runner. Um, so anything that runs is basically going to be easier to build. We've not got to mess around with the engine. Um, as you can see, we've uh, windscreens out, side windows, rear screen out. Yeah. Uh, basically most of the interior. Seats, um, obviously driver's seat has to stay where it is. Uh, passenger rear seat out. Mainly safety side, nothing to burn, because um, they do, because the petrol tank's inside of you, if you do have a spillage, you'd be surprised how quick it does burn, and obviously because it's inside with you, um, you don't want to be engulfed in black smoke and you know, sort of flames. Obviously, the way the windows all come out because of glass, climbing in and out of the car, the quicker you can get out, the better. Um, basically, down to the engine size, uh, again, most of the wiring's all taken out, all the odds and sods, the battery obviously sits here, it's gone. The radiator will actually be staying in this, which is unfortunate. It's not a, a procedure I normally use. I would normally put a water tank in here. They will run without water for quite a while, um, but obviously after so long they just get too hot and just seize up. You certainly got your work cut out for you here, John. Sure have. This is where we stop talking and start working. So what's Russell doing now, John? Um, he's taking the petrol tank out for his safety side and it's something you don't need, it's in the way really. I mean, any spare petrol in there, even though you can drain it, it's still getting a certain amount of petrol. Um, basically, this the cage of bolts in behind the driver's seat um, and over to where the passenger side would be. Um, two bolts through the, through the floor, two bolts through the roof, and basically it's to stop the roof from caving in on, on the driver. Um, and the same with the side impact bars, um, just to stop either side from coming in uh, on the after it's taken a hit. That comes out again. 
three things you mainly need in banger racing. Zoab, petrol cutter, and a good hammer. <laughs> right, John, I see you've got the roll cage in there. Take it, that's the battery tray. Yep. What's that? <laughs> petrol tank. Um, Doesn't look like one. It's, uh, as I say, it's a bit primitive. Um, it's a sound old bit of kit. There's not a way, there's not a lot of times you're going to make a hole in one of these. I say this has probably not been used for a good couple of years now, so, so it's not. Um, it wouldn't be my first choice, but unfortunately, it's the only choice at the moment. Again, even though as I say it's an old re relic, it is something that's going to be, I feel, safe to be in there, um, bolted through the floor, and I will actually attach it to the roll cage once it's bolted in, just to keep it in place. But um, so it should do its job. Well, we worked into the night last night, it's another day now, and we've got to get this car ready for tomorrow's race, so plenty of work to be done, I feel. John, so far, we stripped the car out, yep. put the roll cage in, battery tray, the very, very innovative fuel tank. Fuel tank, yeah. Um, what's left to do? The uh, next job, really, is this, uh, the door plate, which right. is uh, driver safety, uh, straight across the driver's door. Unfortunately, there's only one door, so it's not too much of a hard job. But um, hopefully this will stop any of the door from coming in on me if I accidentally get hit in the driver's door or I slide sideways into someone else, you know, just basically driver safety. It's quite a wedge of metal though, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but as you can see, she's uh, bent yeah. and it's been straightened many a time, you know. So it's quite a long, you know, long uh, piece of steel, so if you get it dead centre of it, it will give. But yeah. fortunately with the size of the bolts, we use 24mm bolts. Um, it, um, sensible plates on the back to stop the door skins from pulling off. You, you, um, it does its job. Be the sculpting process. A gentle bit of uh, panel beating. Well, <clears throat> as you can see, all the all the fat, as John calls it, has been cut off, and these panels have been beaten up here. That's to keep the tyres clear of any jagged metal, anything that could puncture them. John, painting a car. Uh, what's that all about? Um, this is our a team colour. This is what distinguishes the teams from one another, really, is, um, is the colours. So the yellow on the back was just so there's no mistakes. They knew who we were. We know who they are. But uh, fortunately now, we're, um, we're not the B team anymore. We're the A team. You say the paint can be actually quite expensive, one of the more expensive parts of the hobby. But, I mean, how much are we talking about to get involved in banger racing? I mean, how much are you talking about to get a motor up and running? Um, well, the first thing you have to do is get yourself licensed at Arena, which is about £50 for the year. Um, it depends on if you can weld yourself. If you can weld weld stuff um, if you're into welding, I mean, as you see this roll cage I've made myself, but if not, you can pay anything up to a sort of £100, if not more, for a roll cage, plus your water tank, your petrol tank, um, harness, again, can be anything to sort of... 80 quid to 150 quid. Um, again, transport, trailer, uh, vehicle to tow it with. Um, it soon all mounts up, for sure. Well, I remember you saying there was, uh, you don't often find rich banger racers. No, oh no. no and there's not too many out there that can um, lay like Well, sorry, apart from Mr. Dung here. <laughs> <laughs> what about prize money? Do you, I mean, is, could that pay off your, uh, your annual costs? Prize money on the day um, for first place, £35 on the day. No one in their right mind would, you know. I always said it, if I ever had a job and they said to me, all right, I want you to go out there in that muddy field and strip that car out for 20 quid, and I'd say, on your bike. But I'd come up here and do it so I can have probably sometimes 10 minutes out on a track on a Sunday. So, dedicated and, and divvy, I think, is the word. <laughs> Well, that's it. The car is officially ready. Um, 
It may not look much, but I'll tell you what, that's the best it's going to look for quite some time now. Um, everything's been stripped out, roll cage has been put back in, tyres are on, it's ready to race. So join us in part two, Arena Essex, for a proper banger race meeting. Hello and welcome back to part two of Hooked on Hobbies. Well, I've made it. I'm at Arena Essex and today is the big banger non-Ford race event. John, you made it. Yep. <laughs> Loads of cars there. I mean, it's uh, the atmosphere. You can really feel it sort of building up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be so about 130 drivers are booked in today, so it should be a good, um, a good building. 130 going to start. One will finish, maybe. Well, yeah, in, in um, each heat, at least 30, 40, 40 cars in each heat. So it's going to be a lot of wrecked metal by the end of the day. Oh, though. yeah, yeah. A lot of uh, scrapyard material. You've got the last finishing touch here, though, is that, That's right, the, the, yeah, the, the harness. Yeah, the harness, most important part of the kit. This is um, a five-point harness. Um, as you can see, two shoulder straps that go over your shoulders through the back of the seat. Two side straps that go down the side of you and down the side of the seat. And this is um, a crutch strap, which goes down the front between your legs to try and keep this lot intact and hold it down. And obviously, it'll stop you from sliding out under the harness. The good thing about this, say, this harness, they have a, um, this is the buckle to get in and out. It's like I call a garden gate. And basically, when I unclip that, as you will see, everything just lets go. So once that's done, I'm free to get out of that car anywhere and any side I like. So. Um, that, that, you know, again, another important part of the kit is to make sure you're, you know, well strapped in, but at the same time, you can, you can get out after you're well strapped in quite easily as well. And the weather conditions today, I mean... If it stays as it is now, not a problem. If it starts raining, then it will be. But for me especially, I mean, this is a bit of a quick car. Some drivers prefer a wet weather. They prefer, like, to go out in the rain, but personally, myself, I don't. Yeah. Well... Let's hope we have a dry day and a, and a good race. Yeah. <laughs>
well, John, that was a great race, especially considering the last two laps were run on a flat tyre. But can you take me through it? Um, yeah, in the uh, on the lineup, uh, you, I could see that I had one of my arch enemies behind me. So it's a choice of now putting your foot to the floor and hoping you get through the crowd in front of you and get away, or try and battle it out with him behind you. Um, I made the choice of foot to the floor and running, which I managed to do, got through the crowd. Um, had a couple of scrapes there, about five laps into it. Uh, got spun out, more the fact by accident by someone else, I imagine. Uh, once I'd realised about three or four laps from towards the end, I had a puncher. It's just a case of coasting around, trying to find a way through without getting in the way of anyone else to try and get through to take a place for the final. And hence are coming, I think, eight for ninth, something like that. So that puts me into the final. Tactically, you seem to be avoiding most of the trouble. Yeah, yeah, just staying out of trouble for, just to get into the final. Um, it's, if you can get into the final, it's a bit of a team strategy today. So um, if I can get into the final, then I'll, uh, I might have a bit of a chance of having a race and maybe having a win. How did the car perform? Oh, yeah, this, yeah, this is quick. This is quick. Um, so sometimes it might be too quick for its own good so in, in the wet conditions. But yeah, yeah, I was quite pleased the way it did go and the way it handled. You had a few reservations about using a beamer, didn't you? So now, yeah. kind of dispelled them somewhat? Mm, well, it's not been put to the test, really. All it's had to test is it, it can go around corners, it can go fast, but it's still, it still gets a real good hit. Um, and any damage it takes, that's when you start telling if they're any good or not. I know it's early days yet, but do you think this will be seeing another um, another meeting? Uh, oh no, it'll be finished today. This will be, this will be it today. It'll do the final and then maybe the DD if it makes a DD, and that'll be it. DD. So what's that going to involve? Uh, it's a demolition derby, as they don't like to call it, but um, it's basically the race, uh, 12, 13 laps. Um, to see who wins, and then after the person's won, took the checker plates, it will go on then to see the last car running. So, uh, in, in such, there'll be two winners in that, in that race. You know, whoever races to and the last car running is the winner. Any tactics for that that you're going to employ? Just hold on tight and um, get them before they get you, I think. <laughs> and on to the semi final. Unfortunately, there's been no let up in the day's wet weather conditions which has left the Essex racetrack, well, a bit like a skating rink. And with 28 qualifying drivers in the lineup, all eager for a win, the semi-final gets underway. John, starting way back in third last position, uses the BMW's power to move quickly up the field and hugs the inside track of the lower bend, trying to stay away from trouble. John has moved rather skillfully through the maelstrom of sliding cars and wrecks to take up third position and is pressing the leaders hard. And with only five laps to go, remarkably, John takes the lead. Oh, 
I'd add it then. I thought well, I was going to nick a win. Well, I suppose I'm starting to understand what you're talking about. It's arbitrary, isn't it? Yeah. Bob, how'd you get off? Uh, I did blow it up this time. Believe it or not, but after the pounding John got in the last race, he's done some repairs and he's going to come out for the demolition derby. However, he is missing a few vital essentials to the car, i.e. the radiator and the brakes. And as John, in his bent and battle-damaged BMW, enters the circuit for the final, his car may be in no fit state to win a 10-lap race, but he knows it can still do a bit of damage. In banger racing, it ain't over till it's over. John, I don't know if she'll be racing again. A successful day by all accounts? Uh, yeah, she's done the job. Been a lot of drama today, you know, it was, it was there, you, the, uh, you, the victory was in your grasp, and then... Yeah, yeah, in that uh, final, unfortunately, the old uh, generator stuck to the floor. Coming in to bend that fast in this wet, you've got not a lot of hope, so basically just barn into someone that's moving. So uh, that's what you ended up doing. So the final thing of the day was just to basically plough into someone else and yeah, that's what just, it's all about. Yeah, last car running. There's one of our team members won. You can see. Well, oh. obviously the eight from now. <laughs> well, John, I want to thank you. That was a great. Thanks for showing me a, a, a very uh, individual and uh, personal insight into the very workmanlike hobby of banger racing. Yeah, thanks for coming down. It was a pleasure. Yeah, it's great. I'll see you next time. And you can get hooked on hobbies at the same time next week. Next today on Home and Leisure, Peter Carr.